after the successful port money making guide, I really had to dig deep into my head to figure out what should be the next strategy. And I think I found it. It's going to be Northridge. It's going to be lockdown. It's going to be solo. And you are going to become rich in arena breakout so i already published some northridge guides in the past i have one for the cable car station and also northridge hotel key type of guide but this time this is going to be different because i want to focus on the strategy and i want to give you a step-by-step -step guide on what to do how to loot the hotel and how to make sure that you are successfully extracting and the beauty of this strategy is that it's not depending on your loadout. You hear that? So it doesn't really matter if you're going to go with T5 and an FAL or T4 with a modded M4 or eventually T3 with a carabine or a shotgun. It is going to work if you follow my guide step by step. In terms of preparation, I want you to pick an armor because honestly speaking, it doesn't really matter if you're going to dress up in the T3 or T4 or T5. Because if you are performing well, then you're going to survive. And in case you ran into a squad, a fully kitted squad with modded weapons, then you're going to be destroyed anyways, regardless of your gear. Don't forget, we are going to do solo. And same applies to thermal players and snipers, so it doesn't really matter if you have T4 or T5. You could start with T3 and if it eventually doesn't work, then you can swap to T4 or T5. What I usually do is that I try to balance my armor and my gun. So if I pick up a gun worth like 50k, then I pick a T4. If it's a cheaper gun, then I run with T3. If it's a high-end gun, then I go with T5. Same applies to the weapon, pick an assault rifle if you're an assault rifle player or a shotgun or a carabine, whatever works for you. Because again, it's not gonna make a big difference. But it's very important to take a chest rig and a backpack that are big enough. So you want plenty of space to put all that stuff into it you're gonna find in the hotel. In terms of backpacks, my recommendation would be the 926 because that's big enough and you can do a bunch of stuff into it, like two chest tricks to the side and then eventually an extra weapon or helmets or red items even. Let's talk about the keys. You're going to have six keys and we're going to focus only on hotel keys and I'm going to go with the assumption that you have six available slots. In total, there are seven keys which are worth using, but since you only have six slots, you're going to sacrifice one of them and I want you to decide which one that should be. It doesn't make a huge difference because you're going to have at least six saves. In the building B, we have the manager key downstairs, reception. Then you have the expensive key, the reception key itself. When you run upstairs, that's the second. Then you have the B203 key. So once you run up and then to the corridor, to the left hand side, I think it's the second door. Then you run upstairs, you have the launch two key, and then you have the private launch key, which is again a bit more expensive compared to the others, but it's worth it. And then moving over to building D, you have the room 208 and then the cinema key or projection key. These are the seven keys you can use. Pick six of them. Doesn't matter which ones. If you don't spawn near to the hotel, then forget about it. Then do something else. Check the map, go to a different location and then extract and restart a new game. It's very important. Because if you are one of the latecomers into the hotel, then your chances of finding good loot or keeping yourself alive are relatively low and not worth risking. Finally, we can start the game and we have the assumption that you have a good spawn because if you don't have a good spawn, then don't go into the hotel. But if you do, then there are two scenarios. The first scenario is that you are going to be the early guest of the hotel, basically nobody being around and you can freely start opening the rooms and the safes and then grab all of the red items, put them into your bag. And that is the scenario where you need to keep your eye on the windows and then listen to the footsteps and defeat the bots. But this is kind of the more safer scenario, I would say, because even if you hear somebody coming, you can decide whether you want to fight them or just be sneaky and hide somewhere and then get out. 
So in this case, you don't necessarily need to do PvP, but it's gonna depend on the loot you already found, um, number of enemies, your loadout, your current mood, your confidence level or whatever. If you feel that you need to jump into your fight, then do it and then grab even more stuff, enemy armor, weapons and all kinds of things. But again, let me remind you that the hotel is big enough to hide. And if you are not feeling safe, then just go away. All right, we covered the first scenario, but what happens if you are not the first one who arrives or you are forced into PVP? But first of all, don't panic, okay? You need to understand the situation. You need to see whether you're facing one player, full squad, and then based on that, make a decision. A good spot to be at is right next to the stairs at the beginning of the hallway or the corridor on the second floor. And I said second floor on purpose because I know I made a mistake in the TV station video. For me, like the, the, the ground floor is not the first floor. So in this video, I'm going to be smarter and say first floor for the ground floor and then second floor where we have the corridor with the B203 room. And then I'm going to say third floor for the launch and that type of thing where we usually have the boss. So a good spot to be at is the second floor, the corridor itself. Doesn't really matter on which side you are, because if you are on the reception side, you can clearly see if somebody is entering the hotel from that side. If you are on the other side of the floor, then you can see people running from the other building. So second floor is, is a good place to be at. And there are tons of rooms where you can actually hide if needed. The third floor where you have the lounge and the kitchen area could be also considered as a good place to be at. But you gotta be cautious because that area is often being naded and eventually being rushed and there is not much room to hide. So I would rather position myself to the second floor. Even if you are on the third floor and you hear some noises, maybe at that point it's worth going down to the second floor to check what happens and then if you feel everything is safe again then you can go up to the third floor again and continue looting. Based on my experience due to the size of the map usually there are no more than two squads in the hotel. I mean you and then two additional squads so a total of maximum eight players. Other players are sniping, camping, ratting, going to other locations. Maybe it can happen that the third or fourth squad is going to show up in the hotel, but usually that's not the case. In terms of team size, I think there are tons of solo players on Northridge, especially the ones with snipers or people who are greedy like us and don't want to share the loot because that, that's the purpose of running solo. We don't want to share the loot because if you have to share the loot, then you are kind of forced to do PVP because you're going to find some stuff, but not enough. So let's stick with solo. If you are facing teams, I could say that I'm not often seeing full squads. That's so part of four people. I see duos and trios, full squads, not that much. It can happen, of course, but generally speaking, I think the map is full with solo players duos and eventually trios. So be prepared for that. There is more because you need to be prepared on how you're going to do the PVP. And my recommendation is to be the sneaky guy, to stay in the dark, to stay silent and surprise the enemy because you're going to have a huge advantage over the enemy player. If you are the one sitting there, you could even consider it as ratting. I think it's not. It's just silently trying to understand what's going on and let them come towards your way instead of revealing yourself with constantly running and doing footsteps because most likely they are going to be the ones like sitting there in the corner waiting for you to, to run towards that location and you're going to die. But if you are the one staying silent, staying aware of what's happening, then most likely they're going to enter the hotel with having no clue where you are. Maybe they are not going to even assume that somebody is there. And let me remind you, this is why I said that your loadout doesn't really matter because even if you are using a shotgun 
or a carabine or an SMG or any assault rifle, you can still surprise them. Besides listening to what I have to say, I'm sure you've been watching what's happening in the background. I have three games featured in this video and in total I had a loot value of close to 2 million. 2 million! I was very lucky in one of the games because I found two red items. Actually I started that game with Sequel but he died early so I consider it a solo. There was another game in which I had three kills but no red items. And then ultimately a game where I just had one kill, but that one kill was perfectly enough to dress up and extract with some juicy stuff. And here's the trick, I don't want you to make an early extract. It's that simple. Stay in the map for, for a long time, okay? Don't start running to the extraction when there are still 20 minutes remaining or 25 minutes remaining even if you feel that you grabbed some stuff from the hotel. Because most likely there are going to be other players on the map still fighting or trying to get to the hotel or moving from one location to the other or they're going to be camping somewhere on the rocks. So try to extract when there is approximately 10 minutes remaining, okay? You can still face enemy players during the time but the chance of running into someone is going to be lower. Because let's face it, it's such a terrible, miserable experience to die while you are running towards the extract with a full bag full of stuff and then you're just being shot by a sniper or M110 or whatever. It sucks. Don't do it. Don't give them a chance to kill you mid-game. Go for the late game, because it's safer, believe me. In terms of extractions, I would mainly go to the east side or to the west side of the map. The dam is just a dangerous place, so don't go there unless you don't have too much to risk. To summarize things, I have to say that Northridge Lockdown became my, let's say, primary lockdown looting map. So I definitely recommend you giving it a try. After trying it, give me a feedback whether it worked for you. And appreciate all of the feedback I got for the port strategy, by the way. In case you have some concerns, you can also leave a comment letting me know what your concerns are. If you fail to succeed on Northridge Lockdown, then let me know in the comments why you fail or you can eventually hop onto my discord and share your story with the whole shady fox squad i wish you good luck happy hunting happy looting and have a nice day see you in the next one shady out bye